Coming up on today's show, Tesla raises more capital to fund its operations, GM CEO Mary Barra confirms an electric pickup is on the way, and Italian motorcycle manufacturer Energica offers riders the chance to hone their electric skills on a racetrack. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another round of news from the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get on it. We're starting today with the news that Hyundai is upgrading its Ionic EV for the 2020 model year with a much needed battery pack update. Previous years came with a 28 kilowatt hour battery pack, but new models are now going to come with a 38 kilowatt hour battery pack, increasing the range from 124 miles per charge to nearer 165 or 170 miles per charge. Pricing has yet to be announced, but other tweaks include an upgraded telematic system and more powerful 99 kilowatt electric motor. As you might know, Tazza lost $702 million in the first quarter of this year. In its Q1 earnings call last week, Elon Musk said he was open again to raise more capital to help Tesla's balance sheet. And this week, Tesla did just that, filing with the SEC to raise $2.3 billion through selling $650 million of shares and $1.35 billion of debt. On Friday, Tesla amended that filing by an additional 400 million, pushing total funds expected to be raised to 2.7 billion. $25 million of that money will come from Elon Musk, who is buying extra shares in the company. Last year, Chinese automaker NIO had its IPO on the US stock market. This week, prompted in part by the rollback of Chinese government incentives for electric vehicles, it's laid off 70 employees across two Silicon Valley offices. In addition to the layoffs, NIO has completely closed its San Francisco office, moving remaining employees to its San Jose headquarters instead. NIO's Chinese parent company announced a company-wide 3% workforce cut last month. Toyota has announced some updates to its Prius Prime plug-in hybrid in what is essentially a mid-cycle refresh for 2020. Gone from the rear is that weird third, not really a seat seat, and in its place is an honest-to-goodness third seat, turning the Prius Prime into a real five-seat hatch. There have been a few other tweaks inside aimed at making things more convenient for passengers, but for the rest, it's still the same Prius Prime we know, with a 25-mile EV-only range. And CarPlay. It now gets CarPlay and Android Auto. In the latest of a long line of ups and downs that is Faraday Futures Life, the company has announced it's received a bridging loan of $225 million, which it says should finance operations through until the end of the year. At the same time, it announced a 1.25 billion US dollar stock sale, which it says will be completed by the end of the year. Despite all of this, however, there's very little news about the actual vehicle Faraday Future says it will produce, the FF91. The Energica range of electric motorcycles, the SS9, EVA 107 and Ego, are certainly among some of the most capable electric motorbikes on the market today. And if you're an experienced rider, you should be able to get a whole lot out of them. But Energica is now offering to teach you a little more, courtesy of My Electric Academy. It's a one-day track event that's just down the road from its Italian headquarters, where it will teach you how to get the very best out of its models, as well as not drop it like I did. It's a bit pricey, 990 euro, but if you decide to buy one after you've gone on the event, you get the money back. Oh, and while I'm at it, I've got a review of the SS9 in the works, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. It's going to be coming soon. Tesla might be planning one megawatt charging for its upcoming Tesla Semi, but it seems Daimler is working on its own super fast, high power charging solution for its own electric trucks. At least, that's according to a now-deleted job posting that appeared earlier this week for an e-mobility senior engineer at Daimler Trucks, which would lead to future projects, including one focused on, quote, very high power charging up to three megawatts. While we don't know any more details, the fact that this posting has now been removed suggests that Daimler's very keen on keeping this tech on a need-to-know basis. 
For the past year or more, we've been playing a will it, won't it kind of game, trying to guess if General Motors is really serious about bringing an all-electric plug-in pickup to market. This week, during GM's quarterly earnings call, company CEO Mary Barra gave her strongest indication yet that an electric pickup is most certainly on the way. Answering a question on the company's electrification plans, which itself was pretty wide in its context, Barra simply confirmed that GM will be introducing an electric pickup, which is far better than the considering electric pickup truck of earlier this year. As I'm sure most of you will know, the US federal government currently offers up to $7,500 off the price of a plug-in car in the form of a federal income tax credit. It's limited to 200,000 vehicles per plug-in car automaker, and when those 200,000 vehicles are sold, it starts to roll back. But Polestar, the luxury performance plug-in brand that has spun off from Volvo, will actually receive its own allocation of incentives distinct from Volvo's, something that's kind of unusual. The reason? Polestar Automotive USA is technically a completely separate business from Volvo, so it classifies for its own set of incentives. After what seems like a really long wait between it being announced and it hitting the road, Kia has officially unveiled pricing in the US for the Kia Nero EV. Offered in two trims, the EX and EX Premium, Kia says the entry-level EX will start from $38,500 before incentives, while the EX Premium will start from $44,000. That puts it above some other plugins on the marketplace, but it's worth remembering that it does offer 240 plus miles of range, plus more space than many of its competitors. There's also a review for this on the way too, as I've just spent a week driving one. And now, it's time for short shorts. Audi has officially launched the e-tron SUV in the US and is already offering some incentives. It's offering a 1.9% APR finance deal for early adopters, plus a $750 Audi loyalty discount if you or someone else in your home owns an Audi that's less than 10 years old. Tesla and the California DOT have been sued by the family of Walter Hang, the Apple engineer who died last year when his Model X in autopilot mode hit an already crumpled crash barrier, bursting into flames and killing him. In defense, Tesla says it's very clear about how autopilot should be used. The UK has officially declared a climate change emergency. This is after a series of protests in the UK in recent weeks have been demanding that the government declare one. The motion, which was introduced by Labour, also called on the government to target net zero emissions before 2050. A new electric Ducati launched this week, except it's not really a Ducati. Enter the V-Motor Ducati CU-X moped, an electric two-wheeler produced under special license agreements between V-Motor and Ducati. But don't worry, there is a real electric Ducati on the way. So we're told. As promised, Tesla has begun increasing the cost of its full self-driving option this week when you order your Tesla, increasing it from $5,000 up to $6,000. You can still upgrade post-purchase, but as always, it's going to cost you even more. Germany and France have announced a joint partnership to fund development of next-generation lithium-ion and other chemistries for vehicle batteries. In total, around 5 to 6 billion euro is available for research projects, and pending approval, the European Union will add another 1.2 billion into the fund. The Ford F-59, a vehicle that's often found living its life as a food truck, is now getting electrified thanks to lightning systems in Colorado. The F-59 electric food trucks will have either a 96 or a 128 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it's not clear if those batteries can also provide power for kitchen equipment. Daimler has confirmed that as of the end of this year, the smart car will no longer be sold in North America. It's not sold all that much since switching to electric only models and with slowing microcar sales, not to mention a big increase on SUVs, it's not that much of a surprise. Engineers from MIT have said they figured out how to harvest cobalt as well as other heavy metals used in battery packs from the sea. Initial estimates say there's enough dissolved cobalt in seawater to make enough batteries for around half a million electric cars. UK breakdown service, the RAC, has installed portable electric car charging stations in some of its patrol vehicles. 
Since it's often harder to put an electric vehicle on a flatbed, especially on small streets, this could actually make more sense for the RAC's breakdown teams. LG Chem has filed court papers at the US International Trade Commission this week to request a complete ban on all SK Innovation battery cells, equipment and testing products entering the US. It says SK Innovation stole its IP and is seeking compensation in the US District Court of Delaware. After killing its hydrogen fuel cell program, Audi's now started it up again, promising a next generation hydrogen fuel cell stack in the near future. The reason? Well, it says battery shortages played a part in deciding to explore hydrogen again, but it is continuing to plan to roll out electric vehicle models. Chinese ride-sharing company iUnicorn has paid for billboard time at the famous Times Square to complain about the cars it purchased from Tesla between 2016 and 2017. It says they didn't work properly. It chose the location because of Times Square's proximity to Wall Street. Tesla has officially slashed the price of its photovoltaic solar panel installations, made possible by the same move to online-only sales that it wants to execute for its vehicles. Installations now cost 16% less than the national US average. Senator Lisa Murkowski has introduced legislation this week to streamline the regulations and permitting processes for developing new mines for lithium, graphite and other metals as used in electric car battery packs. The goal is that the EV industry won't have to rely on China as much, but I'm afraid I don't have the details to share with you here. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Last week, you might remember that I told you the Jaguar I-Pace wasn't doing so well in the US in terms of sales, with far fewer sales than Jaguar had actually hoped. Well, this week, with the release of Jaguar's April sales figures, we're learning that actually the I-Pace accounted for 10% of all Jaguars sold. In other words, while Jaguar's total market share as a brand isn't very large, the iPACE is already proving reasonably popular considering the number of alternative models that Jaguar sells. And finally, at the start of May, Canada began a brand new incentive program to encourage people to buy an electric car. It offered up to 5,000 Canadian dollars off the cost of eligible electric cars. But in order to be eligible, cars with six or fewer seats had to have a base model price of less than 45,000 Canadian dollars. The Tesla Model 3 didn't come in under that price. That is until Tesla launched a very special 93-mile Model 3 standard range, which is a special Canadian off-menu only item for $44,999. And you can't use software upgrades to get more range. But it does mean that Model 3s are now eligible for the discount. Crafty. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. Don't forget to like, comment and share and bash that notification bell. As I mentioned last week, we've tweaked our Patreon memberships to give you access to special Discord channels and discounts in our swag shop. So if you're not signed up yet, please do consider it. We're also planning a special Patreon meetup at Fully Charged Live in June. So if you're in the UK and you are a Patreon, keep your eyes peeled for more news on that. I'll be back next week, but until then, I hope you have a great weekend and don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter to one another. And of course, may the fourth be with you.